Good evening and welcome to Crossroads. There's a campaign to censor and malign Democrat presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And ironically, it's mostly coming from his own party. The 2024 candidate has been target of, really the target of many hit pieces at this point. His campaign is being censored by big tech. And when he was invited to testify before Congress about this censorship, well, House Democrats tried censoring his testimony about being censored. And then when their attempts to censor RFK were shot down, well, House Democrats accused the Republicans of censoring them for, you know, censoring their attempts to censor. They also alleged they were being censored for using the race card as a means to try to censor RFK Jr. for allegedly being racist. And this is Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett saying just that. Watch. The far right media has already issued articles about me playing the race card. The race card is something that's often used against black people for bringing up when they see race hatred being propagated against them. And it's a means to try and keep us quiet and keep us in our place. So what's really going on? Let's take a step back. Now, the drama behind this House testimony began just over a week ago. It was announced on July 12th that RFK Jr. would be invited to testify before the Select Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government. A short description for the July 20th hearing said it would examine the federal government's role in censoring Americans. The Missouri v. Biden case, big tax collusion with out-of-control government agencies to silence free speech, and they note as well that RFK Jr. was one of the first people to be censored after Biden took office. And then the hit pieces started rolling in. RFK Jr. was accused of being anti-Semitic, notably for saying that COVID-19 could have been engineered as a bioweapon designed to target people by race. He made these statements in question the same day that the censorship hearing was announced. That was on July 12th. The first round of hit pieces framed his Manhattan press dinner as being a war of words and farting. Page Six initially framed the dinner as being guests, mostly having arguments around climate change. It also accused Doug Deschert, ironically a former columnist at Page Six, of loudly farting. Look, keep in mind, it was a press dinner with many news outlets present, and this was the basic narrative, at least in the first round of hit pieces which tells us they likely did not see any controversy beyond that, at least not at first. But when the narrative failed to rouse much controversy, well, several days later, the next narrative was announced. New York Post published a clip where RFK Jr. discussed the capability of bioweapons to be ethnically targeted. And they frame this as being him alleging that COVID may have been ethnically targeted to spare Jews. But let's listen to what he said exactly. We've put hundreds of millions of dollars into uh, ethnically targeted microbes. The Chinese have done the same thing. In fact, COVID-19, there's an argument that it is ethnically targeted. COVID-19 attacks certain races um, disproportionately. The, uh, the, 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 the races that are most immune, immune to COVID-19 are because of the, of the structure of the, of, um, the genetic structure, of, uh, uh, genetic differentials among different races of the, um, of the receptors, of the ACE2 receptor. Um, COVID-19 is targeted to attack uh, Caucasians and and, uh, and uh, black people. The people who are most immune are Ashkenazi Jews and, uh, and Chinese. Of course, it's true. The Chinese Communist Party has in fact been developing ethnically targeted bioweapons. This was actually among the key concerns with the regime's programs to gather biometric data. A Wall Street Journal opinion piece actually from April this year said that around the year 2017, these programs are raising serious concerns at the national laboratories of the U.S. Department of Energy. It stated, a Chinese general who was head of the National Defense University in Beijing publicly declared an interest in using gene sequencing and editing to develop 
pathogenic bioweapons that would target specific ethnic groups. It says the Commerce Department took note of those concerns, and it was so serious about it, it ordered export restrictions meant to stop dangerous biotechnology from going to China. It notes as well, interestingly, that the NIH and NIAID refused to believe there was any risk involved in collaborating with Chinese labs. Now, look, of course, this does not mean technically that COVID-19 was a bioweapon. Uh, if you were to ask me, I still think it came from the horseshoe bat, actually. But the point is that it's true that the CCP has, in fact, been working on these types of bioweapons for a very long time. And again, opinion, whatever it is, there is evidence that COVID-19 may have come from those programs. We can't write that off. Now, in 2019, the Pentagon began advising members of the U.S. military to stop using DNA kits over concerns that their biometric data of our American troops could be obtained by outside parties such as the CCP. At the time, they cited this as a potential security threat. In 2021, in fact, the U.S. Naval Institute said that the former head of the Chinese military's National Defense University and others, quote, foresee the uh, possibility of specific ethnic genetic attacks on whole racial or ethnic groups. It added that China may have already hacked from medical records or purchased the genetic information of millions of ordinary Americans, suggesting again they can use that for targeted attacks based on race. Again, using these genealogy test kits in that case. And it's not just these ancestry kits either. COVID-19 test kits are also part of that. In fact, these COVID-19 test kits, the ones we all had to take if we wanted to go to work or use certain services, they were such a concern that Bill Evanina, former director of the National Counterintelligence and Security Center, authorized a public bulletin about this issue. The notice from NCSC warned that foreign powers can collect, store, and exploit biometric information from COVID tests. Now, Bill Evanina also said some of the test kits were linked to the Beijing Genomic in Genomics Institute. Watch. Knowing that BGI is a, is a Chinese company, do we understand where that data is going? Now, look, that was during a 60 Minutes interview, which also alleged that this Chinese biotech firm, BGI Group, had offered to build and to run COVID-19 testing centers all around the United States, including California and New York. Now, RFK Jr.'s controversial statements, in other words, those were based on these concerns, documented, very serious concerns. And when he said that COVID-19 was also shown to affect different races differently, look, agree with it or not, there were scientific papers that say exactly that. Take, for example, this, this paper published on the NIH website. It says there is different susceptibility to SARS-CoV-2, being COVID-19, and other respiratory viral infections among populations. And it adds, a key part is less frequent among East Asians, suggesting a protective role against the infection in this population. Now that paper again on the NIH website, their official website also notes key differences in how susceptible people are by race, including Africans, as RFK Jr. said, black people, of Europeans, of people of Chinese descent, and of people of many other races, including, as he said, Ashkenazi Jews. It's in the NIH paper. Similar findings were published in other scientific papers as well. And they also directly note how these exact same races, including the ones RFK Jr. noted, are more or less susceptible to COVID-19. Now, look, of course, take it as you will. It doesn't necessarily mean it was a bioweapon. It also doesn't mean that these are there because of the machinations of a specific race. I don't believe RFK Jr. suggested that either. He was noting merely that the fact that these could be used like that.